Hello and welcome back to AR77. It's been a while. Uh, I wanted to make sure I had a few more things to show you and now fortunately I have a few more things to show you. Starting with this. This is the Smith & Wesson Model 629 Classic by Umarex. Uh, this is a 12 gram CO2 powered replica air pistol. It shoots 0.177 caliber pellets. Uh, I think there's a, a BB version available but uh, especially now when I'm buying uh, revolvers, it's the pellet versions that really attract me. So that's why I went for this one. Had a hard time deciding between this and the five inch version. This is the six and a half inch uh, barrel. Also had a difficult decision deciding between this and the classic uh, Model 29, the Dirty Harry um, pistol. But... I like the, the look of this more, apart from the sort of the, the kudos of having the Dirty Harry pistol. And, you know, never say never. That might end up in the collection also, and rightly so. But in the in the short term, this is the one that, that I really fancied. I think it's because I'm a fan of the full metal underlug there. Um, I like the stainless kind of finish to it. Uh, so, yeah, there's a few things about it that, that I prefer style-wise. And yet, I think basically it's pretty much the same pistol uh, as in the real world. Both are based on the Model 29. Uh, both these replicas are made based on the Model 29 by Smith & Wesson. Um, the 6 in front of the 29 indicates that it's a stainless version. That's a, that's a, a Smith & Wesson kind of thing. That they, If they put a 6 in front of the number of the model, it tends to denote that it's a stainless steel version. Uh, as opposed to the Model 29, which I believe was originally available in either a kind of a blued or a, a nickel finish. So let's have a look at this particular pistol. This is the Model 629 Classic, as I said before, and it is a hand cannon. It is a beautiful, beautiful pistol. Let's have a look at this. So let's have a little bit of a walk around from the front end. Then we've got that lovely recessed barrel that you can see in there. A six and a half inch barrel. Uh, outwardly, I'm not sure what the internal barrel is actually, uh, might not be just as long as that. You've got the lovely red tip there on the front blade sight, so that's really useful for sight acquisition, especially with all this uh, all this shiny metal, uh, and it does contrast really well with the uh, with the, the rear sights there. I don't know if I can get that to look any better for you, but it's clearly, you can see it there. Um, yeah, moving down this... Uh, Beautiful stainless barrel that we see there, 44, 44 Magnum. And all the way down here, it's just a beautiful gun. And I think one of the things about this, let me pop it down for a second. One of the things about this that I really like is it has that kind of stainless effect. But I don't think it looks or feels as cheap as the Colt Python uh, in the kind of the chrome effect. This is a shiny pistol and it is a beautiful pistol. I think it just feels a bit less tacky, especially because of the sort of the black rubber sort of hogue grips, as opposed to those quite plasticky looking uh, wood effect grips that I've got on the Colt Python. Um, you've probably seen that video already. If not, check it out. Uh, I'll probably do a, a comparison at some point in the, in the near future, but for now, we'll stick with this one. Um, all the way down here, we have that, again, that kind of machining kind of effect there. On the cylinder, you can see that it's kind of grooves on there as it's been kind of machined. Um, pretty standard Smith & Wesson fare here. Push forward to release the, uh, the cylinder like that. And you've got this lovely uh, functioning cylinder with your eject, eject to function there. Uh, and while we are here, it takes, where are we? These. Again, pretty standard. I haven't checked yet to see if these fit in any of the others, like the Dan Wessons or or uh, the Umarex uh, S25 or anything like that, or even the Colt Single Action Army. So I need to check out that at some point in the future. But yeah, your pellets just load straight into the back there and then sit nicely in the cylinder, uh, ready to fire. Which means, obviously, if it's a pellet version and they're loading in the back there, when you're reloading, you don't have to eject all your uh, all your shells you can just let me do that you don't have to eject your shells you can just pop the pellets into the back of the of the shell while it's sat in the cylinder um let's close that up again there we go close nicely feels really well made this really solid 
Um, right around to the back here, we've got lovely grip there on the uh, on the hammer. It's really good. While we're here, I should show you the trigger as well. We've got a bit of a nice kind of some grooves on there just to give you a bit more grip. That releases nicely. Um, we do have adjustable sights here for both windage and elevation. So that's good to know, that's good to have. Mine shot a little bit low when I first got it out of the box, so I had to just change these so that they were a bit higher and push the front of the nose up a little bit when I'm aiming. Uh, and I seem to have sorted that out now. Shoots pretty accurately, which you would expect from a pellet pistol, especially one with a fairly long, long barrel. While we're here, let's look at these lovely grips. Nice bit of Smith & Wesson detailing there. Uh, and really grippy, nice, rubbery, not plastic. Uh, you know, feel pretty firm, these grips, similar to the, the quality of the grips that you'd get on the Dan Wesson 715s. Um, and for any of you that are familiar with this, uh, this functionality, as it were, you can just pop off the side of the, uh, of the grip there. And you've got your housing here for your CO2. You also have, in this side, you have your little tool there. So no one's going to lose anything uh, that fits snugly into the uh, hexagonal bit at the bottom there, the Allen key bit, uh, and it works perfectly well. Uh, really tight fitting as well, as well. really nice. Uh, when, you, when, you, when I first closed this up with the CO2, no hissing or anything like that. Uh, and the first time I did it, I didn't actually have any, any oil on the top of the, uh, of the CO2 canister. I thought, we'll just see how it, how it fares on its own. And yeah, no hissing or anything, no lost gas. So that's a big plus in my book. And then you can see there's a little tab there on the top of the side of the grip that just indexes with this bit here. You marry it all up. Let's do that properly. Marry it all up and then just a little squeeze and it's all together. But it's not loose, it doesn't feel rattly or anything like that. Really good, uh, really good design. Uh, the back strap's kind of covered by these hoe grips. I think in the real world you can get different grips for the uh, Model 29 or the 629. Uh, a little bit more rounded off here and they can expose a bit of the back back strap there, but not so with these uh, quite accurate looking Hogue style grips. Again, a bit more Smith & Wesson detail. I do love that, uh, especially when it's a replica. I do love that sort of level of detail. You get to see a bit of etching, a bit of etched design, far better than a bit of white writing on your pistols. And yeah, we do have a little bit of that, kind of tastefully done. Limited tra license trademarks of Smith & Wesson Inc. 629 Classic 6.5. Uh, I believe this is available in the 629, uh, sorry, in the six and a half inch version, as well as the five inch version. I'm not sure if there's another one, um, certainly in the, in the pellet pistol range. 629 Classic etched onto that lovely long barrel really lovely pistol i'm sure you'll agree uh shoots fairly accurately uh it's it's reasonable power i've shot the living daylights out of a number of cans in the back garden uh, it will smash bottles so make sure you've got something underneath the bottles if you if you're shooting at glass make sure you're collecting up the bits of glass afterwards uh, i mean it's your garden it's up to you do what you want but that's that would be my, my recommendation um, yeah, a really, really lovely pistol. Uh, Comparison-wise, I would compare it to the Dan Wesson 715 uh, in terms of build quality. Uh, better than the, um, it's better than the, the Umrex, the Colt um, Python, definitely. Uh, and it's more accurate than the kind of the, the earlier Dan Wessons. It's more accurate than the... Uh, the Umrex Legends series, you've seen that I've got the S25 and the S40. Uh, feels quite similar to those, and yet it's more accurate in terms of the size of the, of the cylinder itself. I think that's more representative of the actual firearm. Uh, and it's really just good to have a lovely, fully licensed, fully branded up Smith & Wesson pistol on the table. Uh, they're not cheap. They're going to cost you, it's going to cost you about uh, £200 or there or thereabouts. You might be lucky and get one for less than that, uh, but I have seen them for, on sale for like up to 235, which personally, I don't think I'd pay. I think up to 200 pounds is, is enough of anyone's hard earned cash, especially these days. So shop around, you might just find yourself one second hand at some point, but I do think these revolvers, these Smith & Wessons, be it this one or the, uh, the M29, 
I think they'll be the sort of replica uh, pistols that people will keep a hold of once they've got them. Uh, and there's that fear, isn't there, amongst us collectors of when are they going to stop producing that certain model in that certain um, iteration. So, uh, yeah, I would get your hands on one of these while you can. Uh, and it's preference, isn't it? You know, the, the M29 doesn't have the full underlug. This looks more like the sort of Colt Python styling. Um, the M29 kind of finishes there, and this bit is, uh, there's no metal from there on in. But I'm pretty sure the functioning, the uh, internals, functioning internals of both the M29 and the 629 by Umrex will pretty much, leave, pretty much be identical. There you go. Uh, tried to keep that short and sweet for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's good to be back. I've got another couple of videos coming up for you very soon. So uh, please do stay safe. Take care. All the best. Bye.